Hey everybody, come ride along with Teddy and I for our very first cross-country schooling together. Make sure you stick around long enough to see what I do with a horse when they refuse a fence online, as well as riding. So we're here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. This is just about 45 minutes, about an hour away from where we live. Not too far, beautiful place. We're very lucky to have it accessible to us in Area 9 here. You can either just pay a day fee per horse or a yearly fee, which I typically go for. But very, very fortunate to have it. So I'm playing with him on the ground first because he's new to me. I don't know him very well. Slash, I do know he has a history of bucking. It's not an all the time thing, but when he does, it can be extreme. And people are very unlikely to ride it. And I'm no bronc rider, so I'm going to check him out on the ground. The things I'm looking for on the ground before I get on is for him to be calm, connected, and responsive. And to be quite honest, um, he usually stays actually pretty calm. I'm yet to see him get pretty riled up on the ground. Uh, so that's not something I've had to worry about, but I still test it out and make sure it's there. It's the other two. It's the connected and responsive part that he's not always 100%. And so those are the parts I'm really working with on the ground before I get on that he's connected and responsive to me. So here, you're going to see that he gets surprised by this fence and whips away from it. And you're going to notice that I don't put any pressure with him at the base of the jump. I'm just going to send him right back to it. But notice I don't press him into the jump. I want him to choose to jump it. There, it gives us a real exuberant jump there. Um, so when they come, I really try from about this point on not to push the horse at all into the fence. I want them to, to choose to do it. I don't want jumping to be a high pressure situation that doesn't mean later on when I'm more in refinement place with my horse doesn't mean I can't add leg or things like that but especially in the teaching phase I want to make sure that they don't associate jumping with a bunch of pressure because if every time they come up to a fence I'm always putting pressure on them they're going to associate jumping with pressure so it's really important for them to figure out how to like it and enjoy it and choose to do it so again, if he chooses to come away from it, I'm just going to send him right back to it. No problem. I'm going to do it again. But there he kind of caught his eye on that jump, so I allowed him to do that. And I'm just going to send him right back around to the other jump. Here we go. He's so bouncy. He's so fun to watch. And wee, there you go. You can see him make that decision to do it. No big deal. What a good boy. Bring him in. Now we're going to test him out on some bigger fences. And this boy, he's just so athletic, super fortunate to get to have him. I'm really excited about our future together. Every day, um, getting to know him more and learn about him. I'm just loving him more and more. It's really a joy to work with. So I'm going to send him off. And pops right over it with plenty of clearance. Jumps it from the trot, even a prelim fence. This boy has so much scope. So excited to get to do that riding him someday. So it's all feeling pretty good. So I feel like it's good to go ahead and get on. Make Eric, make sure everything's good. Get my stirrups all ready. Get him to come up to the jump for me to get on. Try to save his back by not getting on from the ground. Take my time if he goes to move off. Just reset him up. No big deal. So I want to make sure he's really standing when I go to get on him. I've heard there's moments when you go to get on him that that's kind of when you can feel like he's going to buck and he can kind of go from there. So I just really try to make sure he's really with me. So now as I get on him, I kind of think of the same thing. Is he calm, connected, responsive? Can we do all three gates? And does he stay calm, connected, and responsive? And if he didn't on the flat, then I wouldn't proceed to jumping if I didn't have that calm, connected, and responsive feeling. Because if I don't have it on the flat, chances are it's not going to happen when I go to jumping. And he's feeling really good. His canter is just to die for. So fun. Has fantastic rhythm. So another thing with this guy is he's a very different ride than what I'm used to riding. And it's definitely an adjustment, especially the jumping part. And so you'll notice later when we're jumping, I get some deep spots. I get some long spots. And that's just part of me learning him and learning how to ride him and get together. Um, and that's just going to take time. And that's why I'm sticking with some smaller fences for now. He can easily do bigger. 
But until we kind of, I kind of adjust to him and figure him out more, um, we're going to keep things small to make sure that it's a fun and enjoyable experience for him. And he's feeling really good here. So I decided to come to my first fence and I'm going to bring him back down to a trot. I always like to jump these young ones out of a trot first. Helps them with the rhythm and also usually gain a pretty good spot. That's feeling good. What a good boy. So we're going to come around at the canter. So again, just getting a little deep. But that's okay. Just learning and figuring them out. I think about the rhythm, the straightness, and then the fun jump. Such a good boy. And you can't really tell, but I'm grabbing Maine each time to try to get out of his way as much as possible. And now we're going to go explore a bit, see what he thinks of the other jumps. And I do a lot of, again, jumping out of the trot when I first show him something. So that way he has time to really read something and be able to say yes to it. A lot of times if you just canter them up to it, they don't even have time to really look at it. And it really surprises them. And they stop just simply because they didn't have enough time to process. So I'm trying to make sure I'm making no assumptions with him giving him time to see stuff. Um, again, he's so talented. It'd be super easy to just want to go and jump the big stuff and go for it. Because he could. He's so talented. But trying to keep it really easy. Here, we're doing a ditch. It's just a little faux ditch. Um, but keeping it really simple and giving him that time. If he needs to stop and look for it, that's fine. Then I'll ask him for it again. Let him look at it, give him as much of his head and his neck as he needs to really get a good eye on it, then ask him for it again. You'll see I just say real soft, positive, encouraging, and there he pops over it, no big deal. Gives him that time to really think about it. Goes back for it, see how he is on the second try. And he has got it. So now I go ahead and put it in to a combination <clears throat> and see how he does coming out at a bit of a higher speed. We're really lucky around here. we got so much terrain. We're always working on uphill or downhill. <clears throat> that can be a little hard sometimes, but it's really good for the horse's balance. And just pops right over it. No big deal whatsoever. Again, I'm just, we're, we're figuring out our partnership. Here's another one. A little bit bigger so again I just show it to him at the walk and he is not bothered at all in fact puts almost every foot inside of it no big deal and so we're gonna just go right right away and put it into the combination this is the novice level that we're gonna do here so direction speed Rhythm and balance are the things I'm keeping in my mind. But direction and speed are the number two things I'm really keeping in my mind as we're going. And here's a good little set of jumps. Um, here we took off long. Got a little left behind there. And then the second time, got a little tight. <laughs> and then the third time, we got it just right. Got our mojo together and got our... Good feeling, good, nice distance to the jump. And here we are. This was actually his one kind of silly moment. But what I liked about it is he was really let me bring him back down. So there he went to be a little while. I'm like, nope, you're coming here. And he actually softly came back and I gave him a cookie when he came back to me. And then we just went right back to it. I was really pleased. That was his like one kind of real excited moment of the day. And so really it was not bad at all. I was super pleased with him. And we just moved on from it like no problem. His RPMs, his internal RPMs, as I like to say, came right back down. And went right back to work, having fun. Popping around. So here, unfortunately, this next jump, he actually stopped at it. But we didn't get a video of him stopping. He's already stopped, and so I'm letting him walk up to it. Because he stopped about 10 feet away from me. He thought it was really exciting. So I let him stop, and now I'm going to let him check it out. And so what I do typically, not all the time, but most of the time, I'll let them check it out. And then I'm going to ask them to back up. And I'm not backing them up to punish them. I'm just backing them up so that way I can keep them on a straight line. 
And you'll see there his backup's a little sticky. That's something I'll need to work on him with to get it softer and more responsive, but no big deal. I back it up to keep them on that straight line to keep them on the focus. And here I have the perfect option to go to the smaller one, which I choose to do just to make it an even simpler question for him. I want him to be able to find the word yes to stuff. And so however I can help him find that yes word, I'm going to do. So I just made it a little simpler there. And now I'm going to come back around to the bigger one. And again, the backup, it's not meant to be as a punishment. It's just so you can reset yourself and then come back to the jump without turning away from it and then coming back around. Super, no big deal. Jump over this one. This one can be a looker, so I chose to do it at the trot. Started nice and small. And then we moved on to the bigger size of that jump type jump. Again, I started at the trot. Let him have a chance to look at it. And I have to admit, it was really hard not to want to do too much with him today. I'm just still learning about him and getting a partnership, but it felt so good. I was really tempting to want to do more, but I just kept it pretty simple today. Um, also, too, he's not um, in fabulous shape. We're just getting in shape. And so I want to keep it fun and easy for him, him enjoying his job, him enjoying um, our partnership. And uh, boy, am I really enjoying him. So yeah, so that's it. Jumped our little corner here. And that was the last jump of the day. It felt fantastic. Smiling ear to ear. He got cookies for being such a good boy. He's such a love. Everybody loves him. So hope you guys enjoyed riding around on our very first cross-country schooling together.